Hola amigos, Joseph here and today I want to share with you 12 MacBook applications that in some way improve my daily workflow or had some benefit in general on my life. Let's just dive into it. I think almost everyone knows Google Drive and basically the whole Google ecosystem. But what you might not know is that uh, there is a standalone application for Google Drive. So now you can have a desktop application for your Google Drive. It basically works as a folders in your laptop with the only difference that it's synchronizing the changes between your Google Drive and between your folders in your computer. So if you make any changes in the folders in your computer, it will reflect in Google Drive and the opposite. For me, it was a game changer specifically because now I'm working just in Google Drive. So everything is saved there. And when I'm working on something in, in, in any software, when I'm gonna save it, it's automatically upload it to my Google Drive. So it's uploading even if you make smallest changes and save it, then the version of the file is uploaded to Google Drive. So if something would happen with my laptop, got stolen, broken, I would spill water on it, whatever, I could just buy a new one or I could just replace it or go on my other devices and I would have all my files right away accessible. There are two ways that you can use Google Drive application. One is mirroring files and the other is streaming files. Mirroring files basically means that you will have your files in Google Drive, but also in your uh, desktop, in your laptop. And that means that you will have all your files available offline, but the disadvantage here is that basically the files and folders are saved in your laptop. So it's taking the space as well. So it's taking the space in the Google Drive and also in your laptop. But there is one solution for that. Basically, you can choose which files will be mirrored, which folders as well. Um, so what you can do, if you have some specific project you are working on, you can just click that the one folder, you can choose the one folder will be mirrored, the others not. So then it will be taking the space just of the one folder of the specific folder that you chose, but all the others will be just saved in Google Drive. And basically you can repeat this process anytime. Basically you can repeat this process every time after you will finish working on one project. You can just uh, leave it just in Google Drive and you can download or make available offline another project. And this is how I was working with that. This is mainly if you need all your files available offline uh, right away, like available every time. Streaming files store all your files and folder in Google Drive in the cloud is just kind of making preview of your files in your laptop. So you can see all your files in your laptop or your folders, file, whatever, everything you have in your Google Drive, you can see it in your laptop. But how is it working? So when you want to open something, first Google Drive is gonna download it and then you can open it. And this is working with anything. So of course, if you have smaller size files, then it's okay. But if you have bigger file size, then of course you need to wait a little bit. You are not waiting too long. It's not like that you are waiting like 30 minutes to download, it's like, under minute, under 30 seconds, depending on, on the file. Uh, so it really depends also on your internet speed. With this, you have basically available all the files in your laptop and also in your Google Drive. The disadvantage here is that if you don't have a stable internet or fast internet, it may take a while, it may take like some time for you to open something and it may get a little bit laggy. But there is solution as well, because you can, in these streaming files, version let's solution let's say you can also choose which files will be available offline so you can basically work with that like in in the in the other in the other solution like mirroring files so this is like the same you can just choose which files will be available offline that's why i have this i like this uh, way of managing my google drive better because I can see all my files i can be changing folders renaming folders everything i can manage everything but uh, I have everything saved online and it's not taking my space in, in the laptop. The general benefit of this application, of Google Drive application, what I see, the, the biggest benefit and why I start using it, is the uploading and downloading. It's really easy to like upload and download things because basically the only thing you will do, you will just like drag the things that you want to upload, you will drag and drop to the folder and Google Drive is just like upload them automatically to the folder where they where you put them in your laptop. And the opposite as well, that you can just save anything, any shared file that if someone shared with you on Google Drive something, you will just add it to your drive and it will automatically appear in your laptop in, in the Google Drive folder. So it's really easy, really nice. Mainly I had a problem when I was uploading huge files, when I was uploading video footage, when for example 10 gigabytes or 15 gigabytes, it was a lot. And I had problem with that, that when I was uploading through browser. But now I will just drag and drop and I will just leave it uh, uploading and when I will close my laptop and I will open it 
let's say the other day, the uploading will just continue. And also, if you need internet for some specific time, you like this uploading is slowing your internet down, you can just pause the synchronizing. And when you know that you don't need like too much internet or fast internet or something, you can just like continue the synching. So then the changes that you did will just automatically synchronize and everything will continue as normal. Second, we have Flux. This application is removing the blue light from your computer after sunset, in the night and early morning. Blue light is basically making our brain to think that it's still a day and we don't have to get ready for sleep. So the brain is not like making or letting the body get ready for the sleep. So if you are looking into your laptop before going to sleep or in a bed or late night, then you may have a problem to fall asleep it may be difficult for you to fall asleep. But as I said, this application is removing the blue light. So in other words, it's making your display look more warm. It's putting like more warm color, like kind of like yellow color, little bit into the red. And with that, it's better for your eyes and also your brain. So then it can really help you to fall asleep when you are working late on your computer or you are looking into a computer before going to sleep. It's really easy to set up. Now you will just put location and the time when you want to wake up because it's having three phases. The first one is like normal without like any adjustments of the light. Then you have sunset, which is removing a little bit of the light, of the blue light, a little bit. And then you have bedtime, which is basically removing every blue light from your computer. So then it's like more and more warm the color. Big disclaimer here, if you are a designer or video producer or someone who is working with the colors, make sure that it's every time disabled before you will start working. Because it happened to me many times that I was editing colors and I forgot to turn it off. And when I turn it off after, then basically the colors were not accurate. Like I edited it based on like different accuracy, right? So make sure that every time when you are editing colors, make sure it will be disabled. Next, we have Apple Notes. I'm not using Apple Notes for note taking. For that, I have Notion, but about it, we will talk later. But I'm using Apple Notes because of one specific feature that is called Quick Notes. It came out in Mac OS Monterey. It works as a quick capture of a text. So if you have anything you want to remember, you will just put it there in the text. And basically it's working or at least I set it up that I will put just my mouse to the right corner, right bottom corner of my laptop and then I will just click and it will appear like the quick note. So I will write what I want and then I will just close it. And then you can just open Apple Notes, go to quick note section and here are all your quick notes that you wrote during the day. You can set it up in your preferences if you go to desktop and screen saver. Then in the screen saver there are hot corners and you can set specifically for any corner you want in your laptop based on your preference and then you can just use it really quickly. You can really quickly open it and write. Another application is called Magnet. Magnet is enabling you to snap any window of any application that you have in your laptop to any part of your screen. So for example, if you want to have a split screen, you want to see two applications next to each other, then this application is really cool for that. I know that macOS have native function as well for that, that you can just play the screens like that. But Magnets is making more possible or it's having more possibilities uh, how you can snap the windows. And you can either do it by drag, by dragging the, the windows of the application, or you can just select the application and you can just go to the application magnet and then you can choose where you want to put it. Next, we have a Clean My Mac. Clean My Mac is a really useful application for people that want to keep their MacBook in really good shape when it comes to like several aspects of, of your laptop, like memory, security, speed, and, and other aspects. It has many features. Some of them are available in premium, but most of them, the, the most useful ones, are available also in the basic version. I'm using it mainly to run weekly smart scan. There is something called smart scan and it's scanning like different aspects or different areas of your laptop. And then it's basically telling you what you can improve and it will just put run and it will automatically solve all the issues or, or the improvements for you. It's divided into five categories, cleanup, protection, speed, applications, and files. The best thing about this application is that in the background, it's constantly checking your computer and telling you what you can improve or checking what can be improved. And then it's sending you kind of not like report, but notifications of what can be improved and what you can make better or how you can make your laptop more in shape, let's say. 
iStat is the next application that I'm using. I would recommend this application to people that they want to see more deeply into their laptop. Basically, it's adding indicators of different parts of your laptop to your menu bar. You can fully customize it. It's entirely customizable, like the colors, what you want to see there, how you want to see it in the menu and, and other things. You have a option to have indicators for CPU and GPU, memory, disks. You can have indicators for battery, either for your laptop or the battery of Bluetooth devices. I have set it up for my processor to see what is the performance of my processor, like what is the capacity that it's working on, then for my battery, of my MacBook battery, and then for my Bluetooth devices battery as well. Honestly, the battery is pretty good. It's really amazing. It's better than the default because it's showing you first when you're charging it how much time until it will get charged like how much how much hours and and minutes until it get charged and when you will disconnect it from uh, like when you are not charging it then it's showing you how much time until it will get drained the battery so you know approximately what is the what is the time that you can spend on your laptop you can still working without charging it then it's showing me the graph of draining and charging and also it's showing the life of the battery this is something that you can find also in macbook but here you have it in one space you have it just in your menu bar you can see it right away and then also the batteries of my bluetooth devices next application is called grammarly i'm really sure that most of you know grammarly and it's application that is basically checking your grammatic when you are writing right but the good thing about it and why I'm mentioning it is not that it's just for grammatic but it's also just generally for writing because what is making it is giving you suggestions how you can improve your text how you can edit your text to be more readable more clear to have specific tone first you can set the goals of the document that you are creating like the goal the audience and all the other details and then it's giving you suggestions so you will hit this goal so it's really useful when you are writing some blog post script or anything that will be presented to some audience another cool thing is that it's having chrome extension why is it nice it's because it's allowing having grammarly in google documents which i'm using a lot because i'm writing in google document a lot in my work so during the day like several google documents and it's checking my grammatics it's checking uh like the tone the readability and how clear is that and then basically it's helping me to make the text much better bitwarden is number eight bitwarden is a free password manager where you can put of course password for pages but you can also put uh, your uh, bank accounts your credit or debit cards uh, you can put secure notes which is basically just putting text and it's keeping it like a password you can divide it to the folders as well so you can have like different folders for specific uh, accounts based on where they are fitting you can keep your passwords and secure notes and, and all the information that you need to have a secure you can have them really well organized it has chrome extension as well so if you will create some account in your browser it will automatically put you if you want to save it to the Bitwarden and then you have it available in all your devices plus you can also autofill the fields of name and password so if you are going to some page or you are logging from new device or new browser you can just like uh, put autofill and it will automatically log you in last thing it has also a password generator so if you need to generate some password for to have one account really secure you can generate like random password that you can use notion is number nine i don't want to talk about notion because i'm pretty sure i'm mentioning it in every video because it's one of my favorite apps i think it's even like the most favorite app that i'm using because i'm organizing my whole life into that and I'm no, I'm mentioning it in every video, but really go and try it because this application is really amazing. So I made one whole video about Notion. So if you didn't check it yet, make sure you will check it. Uh, I went deeply into Notion, how I'm using it, what is the application, what are the features and everything. So it's a really amazing application. Uh, so make sure you will check that video. Like I'm organizing in Notion my whole life traveling, work, I have their bucket list, I have notes from books, I have highlights from my books or podcasts, I have it connected with different uh, applications as well. So it's like the center of my everyday workflow, let's say. Next one is called Meet in One. Me personally, I'm not a fan of web based application the application that are in your web browser so every time when there is some application that i need to use that is in browser i'm trying to find some alternative that would be making it as a desktop application and this is the case of google meet because google meet i'm using it in my work uh, for work calls and i was trying to find some application that would be like the desktop application i found something called meet in one it's basically an application that is making Google Meet to be in your desktop as an application. You can connect several accounts so that you can just choose from which account you want to create the call or from which account you want to join the call. 
Also, you can connect your Google Calendar, which is really cool because then you can have all the meetings there. You don't have to go to your Google Calendar to join the call, but you can just open this application, find the meeting and just like join it right away. Better Touch tool is next application that I'm using. This application is only for people that has a touch bar on your MacBook. I know that Apple got rid of them in the newest MacBooks and I'm really sad because of that because honestly, this application making touch bar so much more useful than the default one, at least for me, is making my workflow really efficient in several applications. Uh, for example, when I'm editing video in DaVinci Resolve, it's having like a lot of functions that I have just like access to them really fast. So I'm really sad that it happened. Hopefully Apple will put it there again. I don't think so. I mean, logically, I don't think it's gonna happen. But I have like small hope that it could happen. They, they could like put it again to, to make books. But anyway, this application, as I said, is making your touch bar fully customizable. So what you can do, you will download this application and then you can set it up your touch bar how you want for different applications, different uh, ways of using it. You can either download template, which I did. I downloaded a template called Aqua Touch Tool, which is already pre-customized uh, touch bar that you will just download. I'm not sure who did it. I found it in some forum and I just downloaded it. The only thing I did, I customized some of the things because some of the things I didn't like too much. So I just changed or some things I needed to change because I had different workflow. But after I spent some time customizing it, the template, then it was really useful. Now I'm using touch bar like with every application. It's making my work really more efficient. So mostly before when I was buying this main book, I was hearing from people that the default touch bar is not that useful it's more nice to have but with this application it's making the touch bar like your advantage of using macbook because it's making your workflow much more better if you really customize it as i said you can customize it by yourself which is pretty time consuming because you have like a lot of options right i think like endless options or what you can do you can just download template that i downloaded as well you can customize it as you want some of the smallest parts and you can just start using it and it's really useful I can just like recommend it 100%. The last application is called Calendar. Again, Calendar is really known. I know you know Apple Calendar or Google Calendar, but why I include it? Because Calendar together with Notion, these two applications are center of my everyday workflow. This is where I'm organizing my whole life in these two applications, in Notion and Calendar. Basically, if I have a meeting, I need to stick to routine, I need to remember something, I have a task to work on, I have a project to work on, everything is my calendar. I'm basically scheduling every minute of my life to calendar. I'm using it like on daily basis, like I'm not remembering anything in my head. Every time I just working during the day, I'm just looking to my calendar. First, I need to do this, then I need to do this, then I have a meeting here. I also set up my notifications. So every time there is a meeting, I will get notifications 15 minutes before. So I know that I need to start getting ready for the meeting. Uh, so it's really useful. Again, Notion and Calendar, they are like my most important applications that I have uh, where I'm organizing whole life. So that's all amigos. I hope you liked this video, that it was useful and I hope that you will download some of the applications that I mentioned or start using. If you have any question about specific application or feature or even suggestion, maybe some other application that I didn't mention, put it to the comments so other people will know as well. And like this video for algorithm so it will get to more people. Subscribe if you didn't yet and I will see you in another video.